The basics of training are simple. Train each major muscle group with 12 to 15 hard sets per week, progressively overload your exercises, allow for at least 48 hours of recovery time before training the same muscle again, and do this for years. These basic elements will already account for 80% of your progress. But what if you want to go beyond the basics? You are putting the work in the gym anyway, so why not optimize those small variables that will help you easily get the last 10 to 20%? In today's video, I will share with you 7 little known training hacks you can use to level up your workouts. As always, these tips will be based on scientific research. The first hack is to separate your lifting and cardio sessions by at least 6 hours. Oftentimes, it is believed that doing lifting and cardio in the same session is the most effective way for creating a lean physique. But if we look at the research, combining lifting and intense cardio in the same workout can result in the interference effect, in which the cardio negatively affects muscle gain. If you do cardio before lifting, your strength is negatively impacted because you'll be fatigued, while doing cardio after lifting has been shown to reduce post-workout muscle protein synthesis. Muscle protein synthesis is the key process through which muscles recover and grow. To avoid this interference, completely separating cardio and strength is beneficial for your muscle gains. A 2017 study supports this by showing that if you perform cardio and lifting on separate days, you build muscle twice as fast compared to doing cardio after lifting. That's a good amount of extra progress. As a rule of thumb, having at least 6 hours between your cardio and lifting sessions will be enough to avoid the interference effect as supported by research. If because of a tight schedule you have to combine your cardio with lifting, perform lower body based cardio on upper body days and upper body based cardio on leg days. This helps reduce the interference effect if you really have to perform cardio and lifting in the same workout. The second hack is to train the serratus anterior by letting your scapula move freely during push exercises. When the goal is gaining muscle and strength, we often are stiff with our upper body exercises. We often keep the scapula retracted and depressed. While this can help increase stability during the bench press, we don't want to maintain that tight retracted position on all of our exercises. The serratus anterior is a muscle located on the surface of your eight ribs. It is trained when you upwardly rotate and protract the scapula. This muscle is key for long-term shoulder health. Research shows that the weak serratus anterior contributes to having scapular winging. So if you notice your shoulder blades feeling weak or unstable, make sure to incorporate push-ups and overhead press variations into your program in which you let the scapula run its natural course. Purposely have two exercises per week in which your shoulder blades can protract and upwardly rotate against resistance to avoid long-term shoulder issues. The third tip is by training calves. Now, the calves are super stubborn to grow for many people, but there are science-based techniques we can use to speed up the results. First, train your calves from a variety of knee angles. Perform both seated and standing calf raises. A recent 2023 study shows that standing calf raises challenge the gastrocnemius or ball-shaped muscle of the calves more, while the seated calf raise challenges the soleus muscle on the side of your lower leg more. And as you can see, if your gym does not have a seated calf raise machine, you can still perform the seated calf raise by placing a step underneath the leg extension machine and training calves that way. Now, a bonus tip with calf training is to emphasize the stretched position of a calf raise. Another 2023 study found that if you only train the initial stretched part of a calf raise, you gain more muscle than doing a full range of motion calf raise. The way to interpret this is not to say let's skip full range of motion calf raises altogether, but this shows that adding some heavy partial repetitions to your calf raises is beneficial. The calves clearly get stimulated best in a stretched lower position, so include some loaded partial reps. The fourth tip is to avoid doing behind the neck pull downs if you want to build wider lats. Several studies analyzed muscle activation during the behind the neck pull downs, and none of them found improved muscle activation compared to a normal overhand pull down. At the same time, with the behind the neck pull down, you place the shoulder in an abducted and externally rotated position. Research shows that loading the shoulder position is more likely to cause shoulder discomfort. Because there is no specific training benefit in doing behind the neck pull downs for lax muscle growth, I recommend you stick with traditional in front of your neck pull downs using different grips instead to target different areas. The fifth tip is about squats. If during a back squat you find yourself falling forward or not being able to squat deep enough, experiment with widening your stance. A wider squat stance has been shown to allow you to reach greater depth while maintaining a more upright torso. This is because you rely less on ankle mobility. Stiff ankles are a common reason for why people are not able to squat deep. With a wide stance squat, the mobility demands are mostly on the hips, so you are not limited by the ankles. The fact that your torso remains more upright with a wide stance squat can also help with reducing back pain. To stay on the topic of squats, knee pain is also commonly reported during barbell back squats. So tip number six is to strengthen your glute medius. Several studies show there is a strong correlation between a weak glute medius and knee discomfort. This likely is because a weak glute medius results in inward rotation of the knee, 
which makes your squats feel quite awkward. Training the glute medius for four weeks has been shown to reduce knee pain by up to 40% in individuals with pre-existing knee discomfort. So incorporate exercises like cable hip abduction and side plank leg raises into your routine if you currently experience knee pain during lower body training. It may help reduce discomfort during deep knee flexion movements like squats or leg presses. The seventh and final tip is that most people do not have to directly train their front deltoids in order to grow the front delts. The front deltoids are trained well with most upper body push exercises, especially if you have a shoulder press in your routine. We can see from the research that the shoulder press is mostly a front deltoid dominant movement, but next to shoulder press, also with bench press, chest flies, and dips, research shows great muscle activation of the front deltoids. So for most people, instead of doing front raises, place more emphasis on the side and rear deltoids to create a broader frame. The side and rear delts are trained less in traditional compound exercises compared to the front delts, so I would focus on isolating these muscles instead. Most people will have a front raise, side raise, and rear delt fly in their program. I actually recommend taking out the front raise, doing side raises twice, and keeping the rear delt flies. Your volume allocation for the shoulders will now allow for more balanced shoulder development. And that was it for today's video. I hope these seven training hacks have been useful to you and you have some new information to level up your workouts. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also, if you found this video helpful, then leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and I will see you in the next one.